Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I'm gonna do a little review of the We Are Memory Keepers cordless marker airbrush. I was interested in trying out the We Are Memory Keepers airbrush system because I had seen the Copic system up close, but the Copic airbrush system is $150 and the We Are Memory Keepers one is 27. So let me show you what comes in the box. So this is the box that the We Are Memory Keepers cordless marker airbrush comes in. I will link to a couple of different places that you can pick this up if you're interested. Like I mentioned, I got mine on Amazon and it was, I think, about $27. So everything that comes in this box is all you need to get going almost right away with some very simple airbrushing. So you get your charging cord, you get a pack of 12 markers in a rainbow of colors. You get the tool itself, an instruction manual that's pretty basic, and then a stencil to try out some airbrush stenciling. The tool itself is pretty light and it's very easy to hand hold it as well. Now that my cordless marker airbrush is all charged up, let me share how it works and give you a couple of ideas on how it can be used on cards. I'm going to be doing my airbrushing on my Waffle Flower Water Medium Mat, but to protect the surface, which is nice and white, from any overspray, I'm gonna be using the Waffle Flower Premium Palette Paper, which is a pad of palette paper that fits perfectly inside the work surface there. So I'm gonna start off by uncapping the pink marker and then just sliding the tip right into the airbrush tool. And it's literally as simple as that, and then just press the button. I couldn't believe how easy it was to start out airbrushing right away as soon as the tool was charged. It is very simple to use. So then I wanted to try out one of the stencils and see how that worked. Now all of the images on the stencil are pretty close together. So to make sure that I didn't overspray onto an area or opening that I didn't want, I used a bunch of the wide Thermoweb purple tape to mask off those excess areas. And then I'm gonna just pull the marker out that I don't want to use and put a new one in. You don't have to clean it out or do anything different in between. You just take one out and put the next one in, which I love. This is a very user-friendly tool and it wasn't difficult to maneuver the markers or the tool itself. It was very easy to do. And that's so cute with a little heart. So this time I am going to create a sky and grass background. So I'm gonna mask off the bottom first, which is gonna be my grass. And so I'm just gonna use a couple of pieces of that thick Thermoid purple tape to mask that area off. And then I'm going to use a really light touch and further away with the airbrush to make a nice light blue sky. And this purple tape can be used over and over again. So don't worry about wasting it. You'll just keep using it. Once the sky was done, I put the tape on the sky to cover it up so I didn't get any green grass on there. And once I have the sky masked off, I'm gonna change the blue marker to a green marker. Again, you just basically pull the one out that you don't want anymore and put the new one in. Super, super simple. So just insert the tip into that hole there and you can feel when it's kind of pressed all the way in. If it doesn't spray right away, that means you don't have it pushed in far enough, but I never had that problem. It was so easy to use. I also added a little bit of dark green in a couple of spots just to make some hills on that grass. And then when I pulled off the tape, I noticed there was a little white line. I didn't want that. So I'm going back to the blue just to cover up that line and finish up my sky. And this kind of background is perfect for critters or any kind of little scene. And I love the little airbrushed look. Okay, for this one, I'm actually going to do a rainbow. I know you're all shocked by that, but there is a rainbow of markers included in the pack. So I thought, what better way to try out all the colors and the airbrush tool than to airbrush a rainbow? super, super easy. Again, you guys, just going back and forth 
it's really, I noticed better to start off light. And then once you kind of realize it's too light, just go back over it a couple of times. So I just did really light sprays back and forth and just a couple of times until I achieved the amount of color that I wanted down on the paper. And I just love this tool. I think it is so easy to use and so easy to create such a pretty different effect that airbrushing is just so unique and will really, I think, make some fun cards. The other thing you can do is you don't always have to use white cardstock. Try using some colorful cardstock. So I'm just going to use a really light spray of the pink on pink cardstock. Also, the further away you are from the cardstock, the wider the area you're going to cover, but the lighter it's going to be. The closer in you get, the darker it's going to be or more concentrated. So I'm going to try that stenciling again. And this time I really want to make sure everything is masked off so that I I only get ink on the place that I'm trying to stencil because last time I did get some overspray in a couple of spots. So really masking off with a lot of the purple tape so that I can really get close and cover in this stencil that says love. Wait until you see this. Oh, so cute. It's so, so cute. It looks like um, sidewalk spray almost. So I just, I think it's really, really cute. And I'm gonna do the heart right underneath it with some of the darker pink. And also the slower you go, the darker it's going to be. I just did some spritzes there with the purple and that just kind of added little hints of purple. So depending on how close you are, how fast you move, uh, you know, all those things really depend on how much color you're gonna get and how concentrated it is. So let's turn the rainbow background into this happy birthday card. I am using the happy birthday sentiments and matching dye from Waffle Flower. I'm gonna stamp the open happy birthday out and then I am gonna cut this out. I'm using that same purple tape because you can really use it again and again and again and until there's like no stick left. And I'm gonna run it through my die cut machine. Once I die cut it out, I used the markers from the kit to color in each letter. Now you'll notice these are not coloring markers, right? So they're very uh, saturated colors, but I thought it was kind of cool to use the same exact rainbow that I used on the background to color in the letters. So I wouldn't necessarily advise using them to color anything in, but for this, I thought it looked cute. So I trimmed the panel down so there was a little margin on the left and right hand side, and now I'm popping up my sentiment in the middle and that is it, it's just a fun rainbow birthday card. You could add sequins or anything else, but I liked it as it is. Okay, for our airbrushed sky and grass, I'm going to add the reverse confetti love is in the air. I've already colored and cut out my little critter there, and now I'm just stamping the XOXO love is in the air sentiment. I trimmed down the whole panel to four by five and a quarter on some white cardstock, and then I'm adding my little critter with some foam tape on top. Super, super easy to create those backgrounds. And for our stenciled image, I'm going to cut it out with the scalloped square from Waffle Flower. And I have a larger scalloped square that I'm gonna layer it over. And I'm using my favorite white gel pen. If you haven't seen my favorite white gel pen video, I'm gonna to link to that up in the right-hand corner here because it is key. I still love it and it actually works really well over this airbrushed heart. I'm just making some faux stitch on top to add a little bit of extra detail to this stenciled image because it was so simple otherwise. I used some foam tape to pop up the smaller stenciled scallop onto the larger pink scallop and then I'm just going to use some tape runner to adhere that all down onto a square top folding card base so that you can see a little bit of the white peeking out from behind the scallop, which I really, really like pink and white for Valentine's Day or love cards. So here's all three cards. I really love the look of the airbrushing. It's just something a little bit different and unique. I love this handy little tool. I think the only downside is that you can't use your other markers with it. 
but the refills are very affordable. Considering how expensive the Copic marker airbrush system is, I think if you want to get into airbrushing, this might be the tool to try. If you want to see more product reviews like this, don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell so you can be notified every time I have a new video available. As always, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. I was interested in... <laughs> How many times? I'm looking all over the place. <laughs> the camera's like higher than normal, so...